I am ready to make some enemies. I'm ready to fight the internet because that's what's about to happen. As you can tell by the title, I am going to be ranking Riley Sager's books because he's one of the only authors I've actually read every single one of his books. Okay, as you guys know, there are the core six books that Riley Sager has written and they are, I feel like everyone is like a worldwide phenomenon and everyone's got something to say about them. They are wildly different what people feel about them and I am excited to cause some controversy because that's what's going to happen in this video and we're just going to get started because I'm ready to fight already I'm ready to but but seriously these are my opinions everybody has got a different opinion on Riley Sager books and I actually have a theory about it I have a theory about it I feel like the first Riley Sager book that you read like of the core original four like Lock Every Door, The Last Time I Lied, Final Girls, and Home Before Dark, I feel like whichever one of those you read first is gonna be like your favorite. That's that's kind of how I feel because because everyone's opinions are so different on those like four. So that's kind of how I feel about it and you're gonna see that in my ranking as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started on number six. This is already going to be controversial but my number six is Lock Every Door. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but let me explain. Let me explain why I feel this way and why most of the world does not feel this way. I feel like everyone loved this book and I just did not feel it. So it was the second Riley Sager book that I read, okay? Okay? And, my, and I'm not gonna say what the first one was because it's my number one on the list. I loved the first one that I read uh, and this one just did not live up to the hype of the first one that I read. So I was just really disappointed. I was bored throughout most of the book and I really, really hated the ending. So as you know, Lock Every Door is about a woman who basically house sits a apartment in this very upscale, very nice posh apartment. And there's some like shady business going on and you're, she's trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And it's a locked room because she has nowhere else to go. She needs this like house sitting job and it pays crazy well. So things happen, the ending gets super bonkers and I just, I was not there for it. I was not there for it whatsoever. I do think I would have liked it better if I read it now uh, with the more bonkers storylines that Riley Sager has taken recently, but because I I just, I, I didn't believe the ending. I didn't believe the ending when I read it and I was not a huge, huge thriller reader when I read it. So I was just kind of like, I just wanted a regular thriller and it was, just, it was just such a weird ending. So like I said, probably would have liked it better if I read it now, but I read it a while ago. So unfortunately that is my number six. Moving on to number five. Oh, okay. This one might make people a little feel a little better, but my number five is The House Across the Lake. The thing is, I still rated it a four stars. <laughs> Everything from this point is four stars and up. I think uh, Lock Every Door was still like a three and a half, but at number five is The House Across the Lake because same issue with Lock Every Door, I couldn't believe the ending, but I loved the rest of the story. I thought the rest of the story was really fun. It did have some like slow points, but I had such nostalgia for this book because one of my favorite movies, favorite movies from high school was Disturbia with Shia LaBeouf and, uh, oh, that, uh, female actress. I absolutely love her. I'll put her name down on the bottom, but I loved that movie and House Across the Lake just exuded Disturbia feels. So I really, really enjoyed the story as a whole. Again, the ending was super weird. The twist was super weird, didn't see it coming. And I had to like come to grips with the twist. Uh, and once I did that, I was like, okay. But I really enjoyed the rest of the story. And like I said, as everyone knows, this is a story about a woman who is an alcoholic. She doesn't want to embarrass her or her family doesn't want her to embarrass them. So her mom sends her to live at their lake house and new neighbors just moved across the lake into the big, big, big house that has all these windows. And she basically spends her time drinking and watching them. And the woman disappears mysteriously one day and she's trying to figure out what's going on. And so it's just, it's just got such good vibes. I had so much fun with it. 
So, but like I said, I liked some of the other books on this list better. So that is my number five. Moving on to number four. I feel like a lot of people are gonna disagree with my number four and number five placement. And obviously the number six, but number four is Survive the Night. I feel like I am on an island alone saying I liked Survive the Night. But again, let me explain why I like Survive the Night. For me, Riley Sager books, I really enjoy the reading experience of them. So even though some of the endings are a bit wonky, I really enjoy them. So for me, Survive the Night, I had literally just read No Exit. And it was like wintry vibes, locked room vibes, etc. So I really wanted something that evoked the same vibes as that. And for me, Survive the Night did that. Probably a lot of people would disagree with that, but Survive the Night evoked those vibes that you're stuck somewhere with somebody. You don't know if they're good or evil. You don't know what's going on. You like go through motions of, oh wait, no, he's actually good. Uh, no, he's not. Uh, yes, he is. No. And it was just, I loved it. So again, if you don't know, Survive the Night is about a woman who uh, is going home and she decides to hitch a ride with a stranger. And you kind of figure out throughout the book, something is not right. It's, it's, she's stuck in this car with him and it's just, oh. to me, I love the vibes. Again, same issue with the previous two books. The ending was weird. The ending, I just, it was fine. I guess it wasn't weird. It was, it was fine. I wish it had gone in a different direction and it probably would have been a five star for me, but I, I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed the ride and therefore it gets a four. Like even though the ending, I don't even really remember the ending of that one, but I like remember vividly the vibes of it. That ends our four and belows. Everything else on this list is a five star because I am, I, I'm trash for Riley Sager's books. And then that, I mean, I just said it, I said it, I am. So at number three, we have The Last Time I Lied. I feel like again this might be controversial but but again let me explain the last time I lied I gave it a five stars but it was not originally going to be five stars I like the summer camp atmosphere etc I don't remember a lot of this book compared to his other ones I just don't remember a lot of stuff that happened to it happened in it I just remember summer camp and I remember the ending I remember loving the ending so much I was like it's a five star because I was bored a lot of the book. I remember being really like iffy on most of the book. I remember being like, I don't know why this is so hyped up. I don't I don't get why compared to the other books that I read by him. I just, I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. So I kind of lugged through it though because I was like, trust the process, trust the process. And I'm glad I trusted the process because last time I lied probably has my favorite ending out of all of Riley Sager's books. To me, if the rest of the book had been as exciting or like as interesting, this would have been easily number one because the ending to the first or to the last time I lied was just so good. It was just so good and I absolutely loved it. So highly suggest, I highly, highly recommend this one. And if you're having like troubles with it, just get to the ending. The ending is so good. Number two. Number two, I feel like this is gonna be a surprise. You guys know the last two books that are left. So neither one's gonna be a surprise, but I feel like you're gonna be surprised about the placement because my number two book is Home Before Dark. I know a lot of people are gonna be shocked about this, but Home Before Dark was number two. And again, this would have easily been number one if it weren't for, I can't really say why because it would be spoilers, but it's the end end. Riley Sager has a habit of doing this thing where he makes ends overly convoluted. Like, oh, this is what happened. This is, and you're like, oh, that's so good. I never would have guessed that. And then he's like, just kidding. This is actually what happened. So, <laughs> so for me, it had like almost one too many endings. Like the book felt like it should have ended twice. And I felt like it just, it, it didn't need that situation going on. However, I really, really liked this book and I really, really had fun reading it and the spooky vibes were so good. I was legitimately freaked out when I read this book and I, there, 
the very end, God, I wish I could say it, but there is a certain piece of furniture that I can never look at the same again. <laughs> if you haven't read it, I'm sorry, but there's a piece of furniture that I literally have at my house and it freaks me out every time I pass it. <laughs> so he like did a number on me in this book. Immaculate vibes, loved it. I really hope he writes a thriller horror again. I feel like The House Across the Lake was supposed to be like horror thriller, but it didn't come off as scary at any point. So I kind of hope whatever he does for his next one, he goes more down the horror line like Home Before Dark because it was just so good. And what everyone's been waiting for and probably not going to be happy about, my number one pick is Final Girls. I, I cannot. And it's just so good. It was so good. It was the first Riley Sager book that I ever read. My favorite genre of horror books and thriller books and uh, horror movies and all that stuff are slashers. I love slashers. One of my favorite books recently for horror is Grady Hendrix's The Final Girl Support Group. Final something like that. I loved that book and a lot of people I know hated it so it does not surprise me and it shouldn't surprise anybody that Final Girls is my favorite. I absolutely loved this book. Final Girls was fun, it was super entertaining the whole book, had an unreliable narrator going on, you had unreliable characters left and right, you're trying to figure out what was going on and it was just it's everything that I wanted from a thriller book and when I read it I was just like this is what I wanted. I wanted to feel a slasher horror movie translated into a book. I could not have been any happier and oh, I love the ending. I love the ending. I, <laughs> I feel like with how many thriller books I've read now I definitely would have seen the ending coming but back then when I was fresh off of reading mostly young adult fantasy and stuff like that I I don't know I wasn't even trying to solve these thrillers that I was reading so when I read it I was like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh and then the twist happened and the killers revealed and stuff and I'm like Ugh. I it was a moment it was a moment in time for me <laughs> and like I said I feel like most people are going to disagree but I hold firm with my belief that most people's favorite Riley Sager book is going to be one of the first that they read again like if you read one of those four that I listed earlier first so that is my ranking of Riley Sager books and I know a lot of people are probably heated by now but you know what it's what I like this is what I like everyone is gonna be different and I am so excited to see what everybody else's rankings are I hope I find that really fun to see what people what books people liked what they didn't I have a feeling most people will probably be ranking survive the night and the house across the lake lower <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really curious if anyone actually has those in their like top two so I'm really curious about that especially Survive the Night I know a lot of people really didn't like Survive the Night and House Across the Lake has been pretty divided on on people liking it and not liking it so that is my ranking and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as you can <laughs> and please comment down below your rankings and why you like the books uh go ahead and post spoilers because I've already obviously read all of them and I feel like a lot of people who are going to be watching this have probably already read them. But yeah, go ahead and post spoilers. So if you haven't read them, be wary of the, of, of the comment section. And yeah, that's all that I got for this. And I will see you guys in the next video.